For a lot of us, working in Fusion can feel sort of like pulling teeth. Even once you learn how nodes work, sometimes just moving them around and working with them in the node graph just feels like it takes forever. And that can make you not want to touch Fusion at all. But today we're looking at my biggest workflow tips for Fusion that is gonna make your experience compositing feel like a water slide, baby. Smooth and fast. <laughs> Here we are in Fusion. I got a little comp going. That's kind of a good time. Nice little screen replacement. By the way, you can get this footage and try this out for yourself if you click right up there. Yeah, on to the tips. The first tip is Shift Spacebar. If you haven't used Shift Spacebar, oh baby. Let's say you wanna add a node. If it happens to be a node that lives up here, it's real easy to just grab one of those and drag it into the node graph. But if it's not up there, sometimes you have to go into the effects and you have to find it in your tools and oh gosh, who knows where they even put it. So instead of doing that, what we do is we hit Shift Spacebar. Hold Shift and hit Spacebar and then this pops up, this little buddy right here. And it automatically puts your cursor right here so you can type whatever node you want. And so if I want a background node, I can just hit BG and that brings that up and then I can hit enter and that's going to add that background node right there. And then you can add that node wherever you want. If you do that when you're selecting a node, you can hit shift space bar and then that will add the node after it. So if we hit XF, that's the shortcut for transform, then hit enter. Now we have a transform added right here after our planar tracker and we can do all the magic that that entails. What the, what the F? F? How the F? I was holding things. Yay. My next tip isn't very obvious. A lot of us, when we're working with nodes, we try and put them together in this nice little organized fashion so that we save on screen real estate and it's really easy to read. Looks all organized, right? But what happens when you need to add something? So let's say, let's say I wanna add a blur after this transform, I hit blur, and now things are kind of like stacked up weird, right? And so now I have to move everything grab everything and kind of move it and then move this out. So something I've got in the habit of doing is spreading out my nodes a little more. And so even though it feels nice to have them all kind of compact, it's actually really great just as you build things to spread them out, just spread them out a little more. Fusion isn't gonna run slower or anything just because these are spread out. So it's okay to give yourself a little bit of space and then just zoom out a little bit. Because then if you want to add a node in between, it's not that big of a deal. So if I want a blur right here, shift space bar, B-L-U-R, and then hit enter, and then it'll add that blur right there after our transform. And we don't have to move a bunch of stuff around, right? So just kind of keep things spread out. Believe me, it'll save you a lot of headaches. Speaking of headaches, how often does this happen to you? Let's say I want to get rid of this blur. I can unhook it here and unhook it here, move it to the side and take the output of the transform and bring that into the merge like that. It doesn't take that long until you do it a bunch of times. So instead of doing that, what you can do is you can hold shift on the keyboard. And as I hold shift, I can grab this and just drag it out. And it just drags it out of that flow. You can also drag something back into the flow by dragging it and holding shift. And then when your mouse goes over this connection and it turns it blue, then you can drop it on there and it will connect it to the default input. So this helps so much. Oh my gosh, I use this every day. If you're wanting to reorder layers or something like that, so we have some text over our screen and then let's say for whatever reason we wanna put it behind the screen. What I see a lot of people do is, you know, they'll unhook this and unhook the merge like this, <laughs> go through and hit media out and then we'll go this and connect it. And no wonder people get frustrated about Fusion because that's a ton of work just to reorder a layer, right? But check this out. If I select both of these and hold shift, I can drag this out and right back in. And so it's just as much work as just like moving a layer. And so I can quickly and easily move these back and forth. That is a lifesaver, I'll tell you, man. So shift drag, oh baby, so important. This next tip is a game changer. You're gonna, you're gonna love, you're gonna love this so much. Did you know that on the Fusion page, you can actually listen to the audio from the timeline? So if you want to do something like time a text message coming in, we can add a notification sound effect here. And when we go into Fusion, we'll be able to hear that. And then we can figure out where that audio comes in, right about there, and we can do our animation so that our text messages show up right when they're supposed to. Now, how do we set this up? It's actually really easy. Whatever clip that you're taking from the Fusion page, so this media in one by default, if we select that and go over to the inspector, 
we have our normal image options, processing mode, and all that kind of thing. But we also have this audio tab. And if I click on the audio tab, this first little option is to pick the audio track from the timeline. And so we can listen to the timeline audio. We can also listen to the original audio from the clip, or we can just ignore the audio altogether. And so a lot of the time, you'll want this timeline audio. So then you can hear the audio synced up with however you have the clip in the edit page here in the Fusion page. Oh, that's so cool. So that makes it easy to time things in Fusion to audio and sound effects. Speaking of audio and sound effects, I'd say now's a good time to talk about our lovely sponsor, Artlist. You guys know I don't do a whole lot of sponsorship on this channel because I really only like to work with brands that I think are super great. And honestly, for pretty much all of our footage and music and sound effects, we go to Artlist because they have a huge selection and honestly, all of it's just really, really good. They have a massive library of sound effects that you can download and use in pretty much any project you want. And they have sound effects for just about everything on earth. They even did this huge project where they recorded sounds from Paralympic athletes. And it's crazy the amount of effort they went through to get these really awesome sounds. And that's the kind of thing they do for, I mean, so much stuff. I have yet to search on Artlist for something and not really find it. They even have a fantastic AI voiceover generator that sounds more natural than I think just about any AI thing I've ever heard. This was a wholesome day. So if you're looking for stock footage or sound effects or even AI voiceover for your projects, check out Artlist. There's a link in the description below or you can click right here and get a great deal on a subscription from those guys and you know, it helps the channel out a little bit as well. Cannot recommend them highly enough. Now we got a couple more fusion tips. The fifth tip is how to keep organized with your nodes. So what I see a lot of people doing, they'll have a bunch of nodes and they'll say, I wanna label this. And so they'll hit control G and that will group these nodes together. And then you could do something like hit F2 and rename this and we'll call this a phone screen. And that's great, it cleans up the nodes and it's wonderful, right? Keeps everything nice and clean. But cue the scary music, boom, boom, boom. The inevitable happens. I didn't quite get something just right on this phone screen, so I'll just go ahead and double click this. And, oh no, oh God, oh no, what do I do? <laughs> what are we supposed to do? Look at this mess that this has made. That, that's not really cool, man. All because we were trying to stay more organized. And then you go, okay, surely, surely I'll just take this and I'll just move it up here. Gosh darn it, that's just, that's just easy. That's, that's fine. <laughs> when I close it, <laughs> it's a hundred miles away. And so it doesn't actually save any space and it doesn't really make any sense until you open this up. And God forbid you want to take a node from here and put it somewhere else. I hold shift and drag it out. And where did it go? It went into Narnia. It's gone. <laughs> I'm sure there's an explanation. Fortunately, we have undo, 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 undo. <sighs> Here's a much better way. If you have a bunch of stuff up here and you're like, gee, I sure wish I could label this, select it all like this, hold shift space bar and type UND. And we're going to pick a tool called underlay. And look at this magic that happens when I hit add. Oh baby, it puts a little nice little background on top and you can grab it and move it around. And if I wanna rename this, I can just double click off and make sure I don't have anything selected and hold down alt or option on a Mac, if you must. And I can click this underlay, and now I can just pick that by itself, and then I'll hit F2 to rename this. And so we'll call this phone screen, boom. So now I have what I was going for, which is I have a nice label for this group of nodes, but I'm not dealing with all that silliness <laughs> of collapsing it in one and moving it down and then it opens in on top of everything else and then you move it up and then it just doesn't make any sense anymore. <laughs> Maybe I'm being over dramatic, but I don't think so. Don't use groups, kids, use underlays. Stop it, get some help. You can even alt select this, right click and set pretty colors. You can even add pretty colors. And you know what? That was five tips, but I'm gonna give you a bonus tip. Now you're speaking my language. Well, get the hell on then. Come on, let's go. Let's just say for a minute that I want to mask this cup. I wanna put a little mask around here. Maybe I wanna isolate the cup and kind of get rid of all this other stuff. I'll just look at this media in one here. One thing I could do is take a mask node and then connect it to my media in one. And then I'll just go up and, well, I was gonna cut it out, but 
now the image is gone. And so I either have to disconnect this from the media in, which can be a problem sometimes, because if you have a mask that's a different size than the image that you're viewing, some weird things can happen. So it's good to have this connected. But if we want to see the image, what we can do is we can go up here to this little switch and unswitch that. And so this mask is still in the comp and I can still adjust it and everything. It's just not turned on. And so if I want to mask this, I can go and do that. Get my mask on. And then when I'm ready to actually cut this out, I can just turn on the mask like this and oh, baby, there's my mask. But that wasn't even the tip. That, was, <laughs> that wasn't even what I wanted to tell you about. Because look at this. Not only can you do this switchy thing, but you can also set this to be switched off by default. And to set any settings for any node as default, all you have to do is set them how you like. So I'll just turn this off and then right click on the name here and then go down to settings, save default, bang. And now when I take this polygon mask down here, look what happens. It's off by default. Then I can connect this in, do my fanciness, which of course you spend infinite time doing it. Not me, not me. <laughs> then look, then look, look how much faster that is instead of having to mess around with things. By the way, the other thing that I always do on a polygon mask and I set as default is right here where it says right click for shape animation. What I do is I right click this and I remove that polygon one polyline, remove that. That's going to take all of the animation off of this mask. The reason you want that animation off is because you don't necessarily always want to animate a mask. In fact, a lot of the time you're just masking one thing out from a still or something and you don't really want to animate it. But if this animation is on right here, if this boy is that orangish red, then what Fusion has to do every single frame is think about what this polygon looks like because it's animated and it goes, all right, I'm going to check in every single frame and make sure that I know what's going on. I'm in charge here. And it would have to do that for every single polygon mask. And so it's best not to animate them if you don't have to animate them. But yeah, you can set defaults to any node. So I'll just grab a background node and let's say I always use red for some reason. Okay. Or maybe I always use, oh baby, a four corner. Let's just, let's just get wild. Look at that. I've got a rainbow going on. I can go up here, right click on my background one and go down to settings, save default, boom. And now next time I drag my background down, whoosh, bang. <laughs> the speed is too dang high. <laughs> hey, I hope this was helpful for you in making your fusion work go faster and more efficient and such. What was your favorite tip? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to try out Artlist and get some awesome stock music and sound effects and things like that, whoosh, <laughs> Right there, <laughs> that's where you do it. I have had no coffee today, believe it or not. I'm just, just rocking sparkling water. I had decaf coffee, but I don't think that counts. I don't think so at all.